In the kitchens of some of the most renowned chefs in the world, there is a culinary revolution afoot. A new approach to cooking that many believe is set to catapult into your kitchen, changing the way you make dinner. It's called molecular gastronomy, a marriage of science and the culinary arts. And while it's proven controversial, it does give you an alternative to that bland Monday night supper. If you ask Nathan Mirvold, this is what your home kitchen is going to look like in five years' time. This is a, called a rotary evaporator. So this is a centrifuge. Cryo-searing. Cryo-fried cryo steak. Yep, cryo-fried steak. Here in his cooking lab outside of Seattle, he is literally reinventing how to cook food. So this is an ultrasonic bath. You use clean contact lenses, scientific equipment, jewelry. You bought a jewelry cleaner thinking you could cook in it, just on a whim. Well, I, the one I bought's a little bigger than you'd use for jewelry, <laughs> but yes. Take the ultrasonic french fry, to which he now owns the patent. So the way an ultrasonic bath works is it creates lots of tiny little bubbles called cavitation bubbles. So this, at a microscopic level, is putting tiny cracks into our french fries. Okay, that's a good French fry. <laughs> Some call this new approach to cooking molecular gastronomy. Mirvold prefers the term modernist cuisine. Whatever you call it, it is home ec blended with chemistry class. New ingredients, new equipment, and new techniques, all rooted in science. The term molecular gastronomy was coined in the late 80s by two men, chemist Hervé Thies and the late Oxford physicist Nicholas Curdy. Since then, it's been adopted by the top restaurants in the world. El Bulli in Spain, Noma in Denmark, and Alinea in Chicago. The challenge for anyone looking to try it, unless you study under one of the chefs who already practice it, there's nowhere to learn it. That's why Mirvold, a physicist himself and former chief technology officer for Microsoft, decided to quite literally write the book on it. I'm the only person who've ever asked Bill Gates if I could take time off to go to cooking school. His encyclopedic cookbook has become the Bible of this movement explaining the science behind the technique. I thought it was really valuable to tell people how cooking actually works. You know, if engineers didn't understand what made a bridge stand up, you don't want to be on their bridge. His world, one of blow torches, beakers, and liquid nitrogen. But beyond the gadgets, there are new ingredients in a modernist kitchen. We got ascorbic acid. VersaWhip, Agar Agar, Iota Carrageenan, Ultratex 8, Methyl Cell K, Sodium Bicarbonate, or better known as baking soda. Powders used in the smallest of amounts to change the texture, shape, and look of food. This is water and sodium alginate. In his Ottawa kitchen, Mark Lapine is combining two such powders for a technique called spherification turning a liquid, in this case, gazpacho soup, into balls that burst when you eat them. The calcium that I've added to the gazpacho reacts with the sodium in the, in the water. It's going to form a gel all along the outside. It's gazpacho soup on the inside, encapsulated in a gazpacho jelly on the outside. I'm just going to show you what this is like on the inside. Liquid inside. Lapine is one of only a handful of chefs in Canada who practice molecular cuisine. His restaurant, Atelier, is tucked between mechanic shops and government buildings in a nondescript part of Ottawa's East End. It has no sign outside, no menu, and not an available seat for six months. Well, 34 will be the next one, right? Did you send 32 and 35? Service. Is this what you set out to do? I want to be different than everybody else? Yeah, of course, absolutely. The, whole, the way we set up the kitchen, there's no gas in there, there's no grill, there's no exhaust fans, there's no heat lamps, like it's a very different setup. Every night he serves up a 12 course meal, turning ingredients like peanut butter into powder. I have pure peanut butter in my mouth right now. And white chocolate into jelly. What's the weirdest thing you've concocted? <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's a scary laugh. 
<laughs> I'm afraid to say, I think. I don't know. It's not anything we've ever served. But I tried to carbonate meat once. Um, carbonate meat? Yeah, well, we were on this kick of carbonating things. You mean you tried to turn meat into a gas? Uh, no, inject gas into meat, and it was awful. It was horrible. <laughs> In February of this year, Lapine was crowned winner of the Canadian Culinary Championship. Three months later, he went on to serve a staggering 100-course menu in Toronto. This is the most exciting dining experience I've ever had. Do you think this style of cuisine is the future of food? No, I think it's the now of food. And he's not alone. Why do people need to experience this? Oh, it's the joy of eating. It, it absolutely is the joy of eating. Last spring, John Placco quit his lucrative job as head of food development with Maple Leaf Foods to launch a culinary academy devoted to molecular cuisine. You're literally banking your career on it. I am, absolutely. I believe so strongly in it. I don't think it's just a flash in the pan. I believe this is here to stay. Already, he started consulting chefs who want to learn how to do it themselves. Then we go to the gel and it's grated on a plate. The balloon we've got in there right now. Then we're into the sampling with um, meringue torched, pineapple compressed, carbonated cherries. And in the new year, he'll start teaching it in colleges. Because right now, emerging chefs aren't being taught this at school? No, no they're not. Here I'm putting a liquid into calcium chloride. There's a probe going right into the meat. So what we're gonna do is put it in the freezer and let it warm up, and then we're gonna be able to eat it. Wow, it's so good. Okay. What is it? Pop it in your mouth. It's the chocolate with the liquid nitrogen. Is that interesting? Oh my god. Who's next? If Placo's home kitchen is any indication that molecular cuisine may move from three star Michelin restaurants to your own kitchen, just have a look at his appliances. Do you still use your oven? Rarely. I have an oven, but I don't use it very often. Your stove? No, mine's an induction unit. His number one appliance today, a sous vide machine, a staple of the modernist movement. It's a water bath used to cook foods at very low temperatures, like meat done at 150 degrees Fahrenheit instead of 350, with a precision modernist chefs argue is unparalleled. Perfectly medium rare cooked. And it's cooked all the way through exactly the same. That's, that's pretty hard to do on a char grill. Really, there's so many techniques that you can be using at home that's very, very simple. So maybe the crock pot may have it stay in sous vide supreme. Maybe the, you know, the, the piece of equipment's going to replace that. The sous vide is the new crock pot. I think so. I think it is. And while purists may shun the movement, calling it merely a bunch of chemicals and foams, an increasing number of chefs are rebelling against the traditions of the past and embracing the trend. Some of those people say, well, isn't this all artificial and weird? And we say, no, we're celebrating these ingredients in a way that you just can't without all the rest of this equipment. It's why last month, Mirvold released a new book, Modernist Cuisine at Home, or this time around, along with cryo-fried steak and centrifuge split pea soup, you'll find North American comfort food. But do you really need to reinvent mac and cheese? <laughs> um, if you have our mac and cheese, you'll think so. <laughs> <laughs>